Hi there, this is Andy from GNA Numerical with uh, another QTS Numeracy Solutions video. This time it's for the calculator section of Practice Test 3. For the other solutions, please see our website at qtsmathstest.com. Question 1. So a sixth form tutor organises a sponsored swim. There's five students in the group taking part and they're going to donate money to two charities, X and Y in the ratio two to one. The tutor records the number of lengths they swim and the amount of money they raise. Our question is how much money is given to charity X? Okay, so for this question, we don't actually need to know information about the number of lengths they swam. That will actually come in the next question, which is identically worded to this one. And you can tell that because of these rings here. So that means it's a linked question and the next one will be um, asking, um, having the same preamble but asking a different question. So we just asked how much money is given to Charity X. Well, before we can start working that out, we need to work out first how much money was raised in total. So we have all the total amounts, we just have to add them all up. I'll use my keyboard to type in the numbers because it's an awful lot quicker than using the mouse and clicking on each number in turn. So 9.5 plus 11.2 plus 13.2 plus 10.05 plus 12.15 so that's 56.1 or 56 pounds and 10 pence and that is one of the options but that's not our answer here so don't be fooled into thinking that just because you can see the number that's on the calculator here that that's the answer that's the total amount of money raised but the question's asking us how much money was given to charity X. So what we have to do is, in ratio questions, you add up the different parts of it. So 2 plus 1 is 3, giving us 3 parts. So we'll divide the total by 3, and we get 18.7. So 18.7 is actually not the answer either. That, that would be the amount that, that Y gets, charity Y. So it's in a ratio of 2 to 1, which means Charity X will get double the amount that Charity Y get. So we have to times this by 2. So the answer we need is 37.4 or £37.40. Question 2. So question 2 is linked to question 1 because of these linking rings here. So it's the same, the same data, the same table. This time we're asked point and click on the student who raised the most money per length. So this time we do have to incorporate the lengths information. So per length, um, well for the first one, let's work them all out in turn then. So it would be £9.50 divided by 10, which we probably didn't need the calculator for. But that would be £0.95 per length or 95p per length. Okay, so let's have a look at the other ones, and we're interested in the student who raised the most money. So let's have a look at B. 11.20 divided by 9. So £1.24, so he's the winner so far. But we have to remember his number, 1.244. Pupil C, 13.2 divided by 10. So £1.32, he's the current leader. Okay, let's have a look at D. 10.05 divided by 8. 1.25, so that was lower than C, so C is still the winner at the moment. Let's have a look at E. 12.15 divided by 9 is 1.35, so that's the highest out of any of the pupils, so student E is the answer. Question 3. So at a staff meeting, the head teacher presents a bar chart comparing the outcome of Ofsted observations for 2007 and 2011. Indicate all the true statements. So these are not normally too difficult. So let's have a look. 68% of observed lessons were graded good or outstanding in 2011. OK, let's have a look. So 2011 is the purple colored bars. Good or outstanding categories are just these last two, so we just have to add them up. So it's good or outstanding, so add them together. So in good, it says 40, 41, 42, 43. 
and we're going to add that to 25. So add them together and you'll get 68%. So that is a true statement. For the second one, in 2011, the percentage of lessons that were graded good or outstanding was twice the percentage of lessons that were graded good or outstanding in 2007. So let's have a look at that one. So starting with 2007, let's have a look at those. So the percentage of good is 21. And let's even bring the calculator to help us. We're feeling lazy. So 21 and we add to that 18. So that's 39%. So double 39. Let's see what we get. So times 2 and it's 78. And we already worked out from the first part of the or the previous statement that it was 68% of, of lessons good, good or outstanding in 2011. So that's a false statement because the answer would be 78. So it's not double. Statement 3. The percentage of lessons graded inadequate was halved between 2007 and 2011. So inadequate in 2007 is 15, 16. And in 2011 it was 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is half. 16 reduced by half to 8. So that's a true statement. In question four, we've got a teacher researching the cost of 15 packs of wooden shapes to use for a problem solving activity. Drag and drop the total cost for each source to complete the table. OK, so we've got some costs at the bottom. So we'll start with the Internet. Uh, let's bring the calculator to help us. So it's 250 per pack and there were 15 packs. So 2.5 times by 15. So that's 37.50, but there's postage charge as well. And the charge is £1.60 per five packs. So we've got 15 packs, so we need to add three times or three lots of £1.60 to that. So let's just do that there. £1.60 times three, not forgetting to add on our £37.50. So it's £42.30 which is one of our answers for the internet cost. So that's halfway there. So for the catalogue price, we've got easier this time. We've got no postage charge to, to worry about, but there's a special offer. So the offer says that there's five packs for the price of four. So if we are buying five of these, we're only paying for four. So if we buy five, we pay for four. If we're buying 15, we're only going to pay for 12. So all we require is £3.40 times 12 because of the special offer. So £3.40 times 12 is £40.80. Let me drag that in place. Done. Question 5 is box and whiskers, which we should love because the questions are very limited in, in the number of questions they could actually ask you about. So here we've just got to indicate all the true statements. The range of marks in test A was greater than in test B. So straight away in one second we know that this is false because you can just see. So what is the range? So the range is the greatest mark take away the smallest. So we don't actually have to work out the difference between them. We can see that the range from the biggest to the smallest, which is with the whiskers there is much much smaller in test A than B. Okay so we can move on. Statement 2. The median mark in test B was approximately 10 percentage points higher than the median mark in test A. So the median on these diagrams is is the, the bar going across or well, somewhere near the middle of the of the box. Um, and so let's have a look for test A. What is it? It's 25, 30, 35, about 40. It's a little bit more than 40. And for B, it goes up to something that's a little bit more than 50. So in the question, they use the word approximately. So that's good enough for me. There is an approximately a 10 percentage point difference between A and B. So I'll have that as true. Finally, in test B, one quarter of the pupils achieved 75% or more. 
OK, let's have a look at this one. So we're only interested in test B. Um, and what we're actually interested in is the upper quartile, which is the top of the box here. So any student here or higher is in the top quarter of the class because that's what that's how a box and whisker diagram is split up. You've got a quarter of the data here. The next quarter goes from the top of the box to the median line. The next quarter goes from the median to the bottom of the box. And the poorest performing quarter is from the bottom of the box to the minimum. So this question is just asking us for a quarter of the pupils achieving a certain mark, 75% or more. So we're interested in the upper quartile here, and it's only 70%. So that's a false statement. Had they changed this to 70%, that would be a true statement, but it's false. If you're struggling to remember some of the definitions about quartiles and, and things like this, there's a cheating way to, to do this question. Focus on the target percentage they give you in the question, 75%, and run your finger along and say, well, does it hit one of those special zones? So the maximum or the upper quartile or the median or any, or any of the other ones. If it doesn't, then that gives you a really good clue to the answer. So this one doesn't hit any of those particular regions, so it really it can't be true. Question six. So here we've got a scatter diagram. Um, the teacher asked the pupils to record the planning time in a practiced task-based assignment to compare planning time against the final mark. The teacher prepares the graph and there's 21 pupils in the class. So anytime they tell you the number of pupils in the class within the question, we know we're going to use that at some later point. But as usual, we just have to indicate all the true statements. So, OK. First statement says two thirds of the pupils spent 15 minutes or less on planning. So first we have to work out, well, how many is two thirds of the class? Well, there's 21 in the class, so and two thirds of that would be 14. Let's even just show you that on the calculator. So two thirds times 21 is 14 pupils. So we can reread this as 14 pupils spent 15 minutes or less on planning. So let's have a look at that. There's the planning time in minutes. And we've got 15 minutes here, which in the question says is allowed. So 15 minutes or less. So we'll include this student and all of these other ones. And we just have to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So that's a true statement. Statement 2. The range of time used for planning was 22 minutes. So here we just have to know what is a range. And we had that with the box and whisker diagram in the last question. The range is just the maximum. Take away the minimum. So the maximum planning time was this person here, 25 minutes. And we're going to subtract the minimum, which is only one, two, let's count that again, one, two, three. It would be 25 minus three equals 22. So that is also true. Finally, the pupil with the median planning time achieved a final mark of 54. So here we don't have a box and whisker diagram, but they're still asking us about medians. So how can that be? Well, the definition of a median just is that it's the middle value. Um, sounds like medium. So it's the middle value of an ordered list. And in this scatter chart here, we can't we actually do have them in order from smallest to biggest. So we need to find the middle student um, and that will be the 11th student in rank order because the 11th student has 10 people either side of him. So we find the 11th student. We just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's this person here. And his final mark was 50, 52, 54. So that was also true. So on this occasion, all three statements were true. Question seven. So in a portfolio based science course, there are three grades, pass, merit, distinction. To select an appropriate sample from each class for moderation, the school use a formula. 
And that formula says for each grade, select a portfolio for every five students. So one portfolio for every five students. You're then going to round the number of students in each class at each grade upwards to the nearest five before making the selection. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, they've given us an example. So for example, with eight students at a pass grade, you select two. Uh, and you're, the reason you're selecting two there is because eight is closer to 10 than it is to five. And we're selecting one portfolio for every five students. So let's say that again. So eight is closer to 10 than it is to five. So we're going to pretend there was 10 students here. And then this rule says you're going to select one portfolio for every five students. So if you had 10, you're going to select two portfolios. Are you still with me? I hope so. So our question after all of that is to say how many portfolios altogether should be included in the moderation sample for both classes? Wow, okay. So all of that effort there, we just have to do this exercise for each class at each grade. So we do them in turn. So here we've got 13 students. Well, 13 is closer to 15 than it is to 10. So in that case, we'd be selecting three portfolios from this class. OK, likewise for this one. You'd be only selecting one because six is closer to five than it is to ten. We do these for all these other ones. So let's even bring the calculator to help us keep track of this. So this one would be three. We would add one for this class. And for this class, we would add two and for this class we add another two because 12 is closer to 10 than it is to 15 okay so adding another two five is easy it's just exactly on five so we add one and finally we add another two so after all that our answer is just 11 and we click on it question eight so I can see we've got a cumulative frequency diagram um, so let's read the question so a year six teacher asked pupils to record the finish time to the nearest minute for a key stage two writing test. 30 pupils do the test. So they're telling us in the question 30 pupils are doing this test. The maximum time allowed for the test is 50 minutes. To inform a staff discussion on pupil performance in the test, the teacher prepares this cumulative frequency graph showing the time pupils took to complete the test. Uh, indicate the true statements. Okay, so this shouldn't take us too long. All the pupils completed the test within the maximum time allowed. So what was the maximum time allowed? It was 50 minutes and the line finishes before 50 minutes. So that's true. The median time taken was 40 minutes. Okay, so um, it's the middle one. We first have to know how many students are in the class. Well, they told us there's 30. So if we half that, we're on 15. And then you just have to run your finger along the graph to say, where does it intersect the curve? Well, it intersects it at a time of 40 minutes. So that's true. Had they not, so this is an aside really, but had they not said 30 students do the test, I'd be looking on here for where does the line end? And it actually finishes above 30. So I'm not so happy with the graph they've given us. If there's 30 in the class, the line should really stop here, shouldn't go up to here, which looks like 31 pupils in the class. So I don't like that one very much. But finally, so no pupils recorded a time of less than 29 minutes. So this is kind of the opposite way around to the previous statement. Here we're looking at the minutes and we find 29 and there it is. And we can see that this can't be true because there's a few pupils that did take um, less than 29 minutes. So we can find out how many. It's one, it's two. It's going to be two students doing it in 29 minutes or less. So that's a false statement. Question nine, pie charts, beautiful. So for a departmental meeting, the head of languages produces these pie charts and they're showing GCSE results for the previous two years. What is the percentage point improvement from 2010 to 2011 for grades A star to C? So let's have a look at this. So here's our information about 2010. 
and we've got our percentage grades and they're all color coded and we've got the codings here so luckily for us they're in order so you've got your A star, your A, your B and your C and that's all we're interested in for this one so let's to stop us making a mistake we'll even use the calculator to help us we just want to add up these percentages so we've got 4 plus 8 plus 13 plus 27 so that's 52 percent and we're going to do that for the the next year to 2011 and see what the comparison is so that will be 7 plus 8 plus 13 plus 28 equals 56 so the difference was um, 4 so it's 56 percent here and only 52 percent here so the answer is 4 percent Question 10, we've still got these same pie charts and we could tell that it's the same data because of these rings up here. So it's the same question, or sorry, the same preamble, the same data. This time they're asking us how many more pupils achieved uh, A star grade in 2011 than did in 2010. So okay, this time is a bit trickier. This time we have to actually account for how many pupils are in, um, are in the year group each time. Okay, so let's bring the calculator once again. So we'll take 2010 first. So A star only, it's 4%, and it's 4% of 105 pupils. So percent means out of 100, so 4 out of 100, 4%, or you can just type 0 0.04 if you're, if you're pretty hot on your decimals. And we times that by the 105 pupils. So 4.2, well, that's approximately four students. We'll, we'll round that one down. So four students got an A star in 2010. We do the same thing for 2011. This time it's 7%. So 7 out of 100 times by, this time it's 116 pupils. So 116 is 8.12, or we'll round that again to 8. So here it was 4. The following year was 8. So the difference is four pupils. Question 11. Okay, a wordy one. Well, we had to get one sooner or later. So let's read it first. A teacher is planning a weekend visit to Snowdonia with a group of students. The head teacher is given permission to use the minibus. Okay, fine. Well and good. They're giving us some information here. So the whole trip, the round trip, will be about 350 miles. Okay. The minibus handbook says that they're going to use um, 32 miles per gallon of fuel uh, and the fuel is going to cost £1.13 per litre and they're even giving us a conversion for gallons to litres as well. So this type of question is probably a good one for finding that mini whiteboard that they give you for the mental maths questions. So they won't take it away from you, you'll still have it for using on these questions. So probably good to note some of these down. So we'll definitely need the calculator for this one. Um, and in, in a money question like this, so what are they asking us? What's the estimated fuel cost? Well, first of all, we need to know how much fuel actually got used up. So the round trip is 350 miles. And we're going to divide that by um, 32. And that gives us 10.9375 gallons of fuel used. Okay. So that's good. The snag is they don't tell us the cost um, per gallon, they tell us the cost per litre. So we first have to work out how many litres of fuel have we actually used. Um, but luckily for us, they've told us the conversion rule for that there. So if it's 10.9 gallons and one gallon is 4.5 litres, we just have to times this by 4.546. So I'm going to keep all these numbers in the calculator. Don't round off any of these numbers um, until the very end, okay? Because we might end up with what's called a rounding error. So keep all the numbers in the calculator, and we times by 4.546. So that's us used 49.721875 litres of fuel. Okay, phew. We're not quite there yet. Now we know how much litres we've used we're going to multiply this number by 1.13 which is the cost per litre 
So I times by 1.13 and I get 56.185, that's pounds. Um, but it wants the answer to the nearest pound, so 56 will do. Question 12, we've got a table. Um, percentages of pupils gaining five or more A star to C grades in GCSEs over a six year period at a federation of schools, okay, are shown in the table. Point and click on the schools that show a continual trend of improvement over the six years. Okay, so we look at these one by one. So school A, 37.4, it goes up, it goes up again, and then it goes down. So that's not that's not of interest to us, so we move on. School B, 44.1, it goes up, it goes up again, it goes up, it goes up, and it goes up again. And each time it's going up by 0.2 of a percent, so that's even a consistent trend of improvement as well. So we'll definitely click on that. C, 55.6, and then it goes down straight away, so that's not of interest. D does 47.8, and it goes up, and then it goes down, so once again, we're not interested in D. Um, e, we're on 39.2, it goes up, it goes up again, it goes up, it goes up just again, and it goes up again, so that one is also a continual improvement. So the, there's two schools. Um, that show a continual trend of improvement over the whole six year period and they are B and E. Question 13, a graph question again, we should like these. Teacher prepares a bar chart to compare the percentage of pupils with the A star to C in geography with other subjects. 80 pupils sat the geography exam in which 52 pupils achieved grades A star to C. Select and place the correct bar from the right onto the bar chart on the left in order to represent the GCSE results. Okay, so this one they've used a whole lot of page um, to ask the question, but really it boils down to we've got 80 pupils um, that took geography and 52 out of that 80 got the A to C. So it's 52 out of or divided by 80. 0.65 as a percent we times the decimal by 100 it's 65 percent so which one of these bars says 65 percent well here it is and we just drag it into place easy as that question 14 okay another wordy one so ict teacher compares the cost of building a paper-based ict portfolio with the cost of using uh, an e-portfolio software and the number of pupils on the course is 125 of them, so I'd probably make a note of that on the mini whiteboard if I was doing this question. On average, each paper-based portfolio uses 75 pages, and we've got the costs here. So we've got cost per page, and we've got the binder itself, which has a cost. And the cost of the software is, is a flat fee of £250. How much money would the school save by using the e-portfolio software answer to the nearest pound okay so we'll need to work out these costs so we've got 2.5 P per page and it's times 75 okay so 187 and a half P the binder itself costs 75 P so we'll add that on as well so 262.5 pence um, is how much one of these binders will cost. Um, so let's put that into pounds now. So we'll divide it by 100. So that would be about £2.62 for a binder. Um, we times that by the number of students. It's 125 of them. So the cost for the paper-based portfolio for all the students is going to be £328 and a few pence. Okay, so we subtract off that 250 leaving 78 pounds and a bit so 78 pounds and a few pence is what they would save by using the e-portfolio software as opposed to the paper-based so it says give your answer to the nearest pound so we just want 78 as our answer okay nearly there question 15 um, another table so the teacher monitors the reading age for a group of nine pupils 
over a six month period. In each month she records the reading age minus actual age for each pupil. We have to click on the pupils. So it says pupils, so probably more than one of them, um, who show a consistent trend of improvement in the reading age minus the actual age over the six month period. So this is another one of those questions where we have to take each pupil in turn and see do they have a consistent trend of improvement. So let's have a look. So here uh, in January the pupil had a reading age minus actual age of, of plus five months. Okay, um, And then in February it went up to seven and then in March it stayed at seven so there's no, there's no increase here so we stop here we don't have to go any further he hasn't had a continual improvement. So now we look at pupil B. It says 9 and 9, so we can stop there. In fact, it's 9 all the way along, so he's definitely not improving. Pupil C, minus 7 to minus 7. Well, that's not an improvement, so we stop there. Pupil D, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that goes up each time, and it's, so this word here is important, consistent. It goes up by the same amount each time. He increases by one each time. So we'll click on him. Pupil E, let's have a look at him. So four, and then it goes down to three. So we're not interested in him. Pupil F, two, two, two. So that's there's no increase there. Pupil G, he goes down straight away. So we don't care about him. Pupil H, minus seven to minus five. Well, that isn't, that is okay because um, a minus 7 to minus 5 is a two month improvement so we'll keep going minus 5 to minus 3 is another two month improvement we've got another two month improvement another two month improvement and a, finally a two month improvement so this pupil H is also showing a consistent improvement of 2 every month finally pupil I minus 8 minus 8 so he's not improving so it's just the two pupils D and H who are showing the consistent trend of improvement over the six month period. Question 16, the last question, and it's got the same data as the previous question, and we could tell that because once again we see those linking rings there. So this time we're being asked for the fraction of the group, uh, what fraction of the group shows an overall increase in reading age minus actual age over the six month period? Give your answer in its lowest terms. Okay, so this time it's asking for just an overall increase um, during the six month period. So all we're interested in is comparing June against January for each pupil. And was June higher um, than the number for January? So once again, we look at all of these in turn. So five here and 10 in June. So that's an increase. So A is one of those pupils. We'll just make a note of him. So he's one of them. Pupil B is not because he's 9 all the way across the board. Pupil C um, did show an increase from January to June. So minus 7 improved to minus 5. So that's the second one. Um, D, early in the previous question, he was showing a continuous improvement. So that's the third one. Um, pupil E increased from 4 to 5. So that's another one. Pupil F did not improve so he was 2 in January and also 2 in June it doesn't matter that he had a 3 in May because this question is only interested in June versus January um, G is 8 and 8 so that's not one of our not one that we're interested in H had a big improvement minus 7 to plus 3 and I was also an improvement minus 8 to minus 4 is an improvement of 4 months so I um, hope you were noting those ones down. We actually had six pupils that showed an improvement. Um, we can even bring the calculator out. It's actually six out of a total of nine. Um, actually, we don't need the calculator. Six out of nine simplified is just two thirds. So dividing top and bottom of the fraction by three, uh, we get an answer of two thirds. And you enter that in the calculator, two forward slash three. And we're done. So I hope you found the video useful and for more of them go to our website at qtsmathstest.com. See you later.